Greetings, friends. Here we will introduce the Hermitian conjugate and the notion of a unitary matrix. I will be using the following notation. For the Hermitian conjugate, I will use a dagger, such as here. For conjugation, I will use an asterisk. And for transpose, I will use a capital T. I would like to note that it, there are various ways of notation that people use. So if you are new to this material, that may be a source of frustration across different platforms. Be sure to know your method of communication. Also, the Hermitian conjugate is sometimes called the Hermitian adjoint. So the Hermitian conjugate is defined as follows. You take the ijth component of your A matrix that's being Hermitian conjugated, and the Hermitian conjugate, what it does is it transposes the ijth element and then complex conjugates it. I would like to note that you can do it either way either complex conjugate then transpose or transpose then complex conjugate. It doesn't matter which way you do it, it just matters that you do both of them. As you can see here, what a transpose does is switches the ij component to ji and then you can take the conjugate there. Let's look at a simple example here. Let's change my pen. Alright, so we got this A matrix here with components 0, 3, 2 plus 3i and i. So a Hermitian conjugated is simply is simply well let's do the transpose first it's zero and then i is actually going to become negative i as the transpose and the complex conjugate results in the negative i there the transpose here will send three here and the conjugate will do nothing to the real number three and then transpose and conjugation here will send this to two minus three i so simple enough I've got to do both of those methods there. And B here, similarly, is just 2, 3, 0, 0. It's the same as it was there. B is equal to B Hermitian conjugated. This brings up a special point. If we call we call this Hermitian, if B is equal to B Hermitian conjugate, we consider this this Hermitian. Well, this matrix Hermitian. So you've got a Hermitian conjugate, which is the operator, which is defined as follows. And then you got a Hermitian matrix, which is defined as such. Now I want to bring your attention to this comment here. If, if A is real, then A, Hermitian conjugated, is simply a transpose. This should make sense because the operations of the Hermitian conjugate are the transpose and the complex conjugate. If there's no complex numbers, there's nothing to conjugate. Conjugate. So it's just the transpose. Well, we also note that the diagonal elements of a Hermitian matrix must necessarily be real numbers. So recall that B was the Hermitian matrix here. A is not Hermitian since A does not equal A Hermitian conjugated. However, B is Hermitian. And B's diagonal elements must be real, or any Hermitian matrix must have diagonal elements that are real. This is rather intuitive as if you think about it, the operations, the transpose aspect of the Hermitian operator does nothing to the diagonal components. However, the complex conjugation can alter the components. Since we need the Hermitian operated matrix to equal itself, we can't have complex diagonal components. Let's move on to unitary matrices. We call a matrix unitary if A Hermitian conjugate equals A inverse. Rather simple definition. In other words, the Hermitian conjugate is equal to the inverse. When dealing with real numbers, we recall that for a matrix to be orthogonal, it had to satisfy A transpose equals A inverse. You can think of a unitary matrix as the complex number version of orthogonality. A simple example of a unitary matrix would be this following example. A is equal to 0, I, negative I, 0. So what we do here is we take the transpose, which would be 0, negative i, i, 0, we see that it's 0, i, negative i, 
0. Because once you take the transpose and the complex conjugate, you get, you'll get the same. So this matrix here, matrix A, is actually Hermitian as well. So what we need ultimately is we need the unitary definition here. A Hermitian conjugate equals A inverse. So you multiply both sides by A and you get A times A Hermitian conjugated equals the identity matrix. We recall the identity matrix is just one all along the diagonal and zero or everywhere else. So we do the uh, math here. Let's try it out. Zero, negative i, i, zero. And once again, we got the same zero, i, negative i, zero as the matrix A is Hermitian. We multiply, multiply zero times zero is zero, i times negative i is just one. 0 times i is 0, i times 0 is 0, so we got 0 there. Similarly, i times 0 is 0, and 0 times i is 0, 0 times negative i. And then similarly, negative i times i is just 1, and 0 times 0 is 0, so 1 plus 0 is 1. We see that matrix A satisfies the requirement to be unitary. All right, to test our understanding, let's try out one tough example and then consider it done. So we are given the following matrix. Matrix A is equal to 0, 0, 1 plus i, 0, 0, 0, 2 over 1 plus i, and then 0, 0. And the question asks, is this matrix Hermitian? How about unitary? Is it unitary? So the first thing you have to know in this matrix here is that this element looks nothing like this element. However, they actually are very similar. 2 over 1 plus i. You can use the complex conjugate here and multiply by 1. 1 minus i, 1 minus i. And we see that this is equal to 2 minus 2i. Two and this comes 1 plus i minus i and then minus i squared which we know is just 1 so this really is 2 minus 2i over 2 which is just equal to 1 minus i so a now can be rewritten as 0 0 1 plus i 0 0 0 1 minus i 0 0 and now we see a Hermitian conjugated is equal to the transpose, which sends 1 minus i over here, and sends 1 plus i up to the top right. And then you also have to take the complex conjugate, which just flips the sign. It is Hermitian. It's just equal to itself. 0, 0, 0, 1 minus i, 0, 0. So therefore, therefore, a is equal to a Hermitian conjugated, which means a equals Hermitian. Now we have to check whether or not it is unitary. To check whether or not A is unitary, we have to see if A times A dagger is equal to the identity matrix. So from here, all we have to do is we take our A, multiply the A dagger, we see 0, 0, 1 plus I, 0, 0, 0, 1 minus I, 0, 0 multiplied by the dagger, which is zero, which is this, just the same. Zero, 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 this is zero. One minus i, zero, zero. We see that the top row minus the first column, I mean, multiplied by the first column is zero, zero, one. We got one minus i times one plus i. One minus i times one plus i, which just equals one. We have this we see that the middle column here is 0, 0, 0, the middle column here is 0, 0, 0, which means that there's going to be a 0 in the middle. This automatically tells you that it is not equal to the identity matrix because the middle component here is 0 and the identity, identity matrix has the middle component as 1. So therefore we conclude that A is not unitary. You could have simply saw that by seeing the initial matrix here with the three zeros in the middle.
you uh, automatically have seen that it was not unitary because it could not, never equal the identity matrix. This wraps up the introduction to remission and unitary matrices. Perhaps we will have some fun with some proofs in the evolving these concepts next. Stay tuned.